Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Sports Sit Down. We're glad you could join us today. We're here, quarantined. We're inside. We're safe. We hope you are as well. I'm Sine Sangani. I'm your host, and today I'm joined by the original crew, Tanea Martin, CJ Rulo, and Kieran Costa, joining us from Rhode Island. Uh, so, guys, the NBA shout out the bubble, smallest state in the union. <laughs> the NBA bubble is going on right now, if that's the way to say it. Uh, everyone's there. All 22 teams are there. They're quarantined. They're all good. They're practicing. Um, and the season's just around the corner, really, two weeks away, close, coming faster than we realize. Uh, 22 teams will start their games on July 30th. Guys, what are your bold predictions for the NBA bubble season? I want to hear it. I don't want it to be a light prediction. I want it to be bold. Nate Martin, let's start with you. All right. So I've been thinking about this going back and forth. And I honestly, um, I do think that um, I, 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 my bracket in general has been going uh, changing over the past few months. Kieran knows that um, for sure. Um, and I honestly believe a lot in Luka Doncic and the Mavericks. Um, I think I think this what the what's going to happen is the Clippers are going to shock the are going to be the one seed in the West um, because of their depth in uh, and great lineup in general with Kawhi and Paul George, and I think because um, um, originally in the original bracket right now it's slated that the Clippers are playing the Mavericks I think, and the Mavericks are going to get slaughtered if they play the Clippers, but. I think that the Mavericks, led by Luka Doncic and um, Kristaps Porzingis, playing a new team, whatever that may be, whether it's the Lakers, the Rockets, or the Nuggets, um, I see them making it out of the first round into the second round and potentially into the conference finals. Hey, hey real quick, I just want to say, you, you think the Clippers are going to become the one seed? You think they're going to make up five and a half games in eight games? I think they can. I don't like the Lakers' depth. I don't like Lakers' death. So I, I, I see it as a little bit. You gave us two bold predictions there. Yeah. <laughs> Lakers making up five and a half and eight seems like a stretch to me. Two for the price of one. There we go. I Talk like it. Again, Here about go. teams later, it, deeper into the bracket, I like the Houston Rockets. If you listen to our past episodes, Dieter Kurt and Bach, we interviewed him a couple weeks ago. He, 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 he had the same opinion, and I agree with him. I, I like this Rockets team. He mentioned Houston could never win at Oracle. That was their downfall in theory three years in a row. Could never win a big game at Oracle. Fans are out of it. This style of play in the long run will not work, and that has proven itself time and time again. But if Harden gets on a streak where he just has the touch from three-point, they, they only need one, two series. He's not tired. He hasn't gassed himself out. I say the Rockets get by the Nuggets in the first round and can make moves later into the playoffs. CJ, go for it. All right. Possibly the boldest and the stupidest prediction we're going to make on this show. Um, I've got Sacramento getting the eight seed. There we go. I knew it was coming. Yeah, no, no. Sune's like, what's, what's he going to pull? Oh, he's pulling it out. All right. Let's just go over their roster right now. Darren Fox, Buddy Heald, Marvin Bagley, Harrison Barnes, Kent Bazemore, uh, Manja Bajelic. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Manja Bielitsa, my guy. <laughs> Bob Donovich. Come on. I, they're not doing well right now. Let's be honest. 11th place, tied with the Pelicans on record, behind Pelicans, the Blazers, and the, the Grizzlies, and the Mavericks. Rockets are the sixth and last party. I honestly think, though, that Kings team could actually make a decent run in a game. Instead of getting the eighth seed by virtue of, like, the Pelicans and the Grizzlies just absolutely falling off. Yeah. Do I think it's going to happen? Uh, no. Is it a bold prediction to make? Yes. Yes. I, I'm I, gonna- I, I- <laughs> I actually re I, that's a very interesting prediction because I I personally really like the young core that the Kings have with De'Aaron Fox and Buddy Hill. That's a great one-two combo right there at the guard positions. 
And honestly, you mentioned you mentioned the Pelicans and the Grizzlies. Those are the other teams that are in the, the the other two teams that are in the running for the eight seed. And I honestly, after thinking about it, agree with you because um, the Pelicans have lost Zion. Zion uh, just flew back today to um, his hometown for a family emergency, and the Grizzlies are are led by a rookie core and John Morant and Jaron Jackson Jr. Like it's not the it's not the most reliable – they're not the most reliable teams. If, if the Pelicans can't come back with uh, – if, if Zion comes back, I think the Pelicans are an easy shot at the eighth seed. Yeah, I but completely if, if Zion doesn't come back and it's something completely horrible, whatever's going on with them um, and his family, I see the – I agree with you. I, I love De'Aaron Fox. I love Buddy Heald, um, Bogdanovich. I mean, this is a, it's a good team, and I, I could see it happening. Yeah, I mean, I I was actually just looking at their schedule. It's actually not that hard. It's very doable. So, CJ, uh, this is actually one of your bold light predictions. That's what I'm going to call it. It's light. Hey, you can do better. <laughs> not, not great, but better for you. Uh, not- for, for me, I'm just going to say this is the safest bold prediction ever because I like to be right. The Utah Jazz are not going to make it out of the first round. A lot of people like this team. This was a team that got a lot of offseason hype. I don't see this team going anywhere. They lost Bogdanovich, their shooter. Uh, I don't know what the status is with Mike Conley. Even if he's playing, he's very heavily underperformed this year. And on top of that, you have to question the chemistry of Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell, especially because they were the first two pl- one of the first two players to get the coronavirus and – I mean, there are a lot of questions about chemistry, and it's the West, you know. Like, like you said, a Mavericks team could come in and surprise. So that's my bold prediction for that. Come on, it's a four versus five series. I call that a normal prediction, not even. <laughs> not even. Well, well, I think when you when you look at it though, they they could find. Okay, if that's if that's if you're not happy with that, I'll give you another one. How about this? Okay. The Go ahead. Seventy sixers will reach. It will exceed our expectations. I'll say that. What's your expectation? I, uh, I think they can get to the conference. I think they could surprise. I think they could get to the conference finals. Um, yeah, that's just – I mean, but I guess I gave you a two-for-one then as well. Uh, so, moving on, the eighth seed is also in question. We talked about it a little bit with the Sacramento Kings. Uh, there are – in the West. In the East, it's completely decided. Uh, but in the West, you have – a few teams going forward, there could be a play-in tournament if a team is within four games. You have the Grizzlies, the Blazers, the Pelicans, the Kings, and and Spurs and the Suns. A lot of teams going for that eighth spot. And honestly, after hearing CJ's argument, it could be very well that we could see a lot of shifting in that for that eighth spot. Uh, so, Kieran, who do you have getting and clinching that eighth spot? Nate, I think this might be a little bit of deja vu for you. I'm going to take the Portland Trailblazers, boys. I think Dame, Dame and CJ coming back strong. They were not they, – they, they were stepping it up just a tiny bit before the NBA closed down. They have the same record as Pe- the Pelicans and the Kings. All, all, all three of those teams are, uh, I think, three and a half back, four and a half back. Nurkic coming back from injury. My guy used to nurk. He's back. Zach Collins bolstering up the bench. I'm going to take them. They they barely get their way four back, and then they win it in the game playoff against the Grizzlies. Okay. I like it. Okay, Karen. I, I respect that. Oh, my God. I might have to get you a use of Nurkic signed jersey. Wow. Give me that. Wow. That- Jersey, but we'll, we'll barter for that afterwards, all right? <laughs> no, what I, what I see um, happening after looking at the um, – I, I still like the Kings out of the, team, out of the teams that is in the eighth seed. I, I see them probably having the best shot. But wow. I don't see – I per, after realizing that the Grizzlies are like four games ahead, four and a half games ahead maybe, I personally don't see the Grizzlies blowing that lead. Yes, they're a young team, but John Morant has been – Blowing has been shocking people the entire season. Don't be surprised if he do- does it again in Orlando. I see the Grizzlies holding that eight seed. 
But Nate, it, it's 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 not fully blowing the four game lead. They, they just have to blow a half game lead and then lose a two out of three to whatever this team is. You know, you're right. The, the logistics of this are, are really really interesting because I, I, I might have regardless, to do the math on this. <laughs> yeah, regardless, I think they're gonna. I you're right. I'm not do the math on this, but I think if I remember it correctly, there's gonna be a four. If there's a four game lead, they're automatically in a play in, and they're they're already three three and a half games ahead of Portland, which is the next closest seed. So they might already be in the play-in. But just a point on the Grizzlies, though. They have the hardest schedule out of anyone in the bubble. They're playing the Bucks, the Raptors, the Celtics, uh, the Jazz, the Thunder, all playoff teams. And then they face off against the Blazers and the Pelicans. But the, that, but some of those schedule. teams, some of the teams in the, in that they're playing in the playoffs could be very winnable games for them. Um, the Celtics aren't a very good team in the playoffs. We know that. The Raptors only have um, Pascal Siakam, who was having a great season, but no one else really. Thunder, um, they're a six seed. Only Chris Paul is leading them. I love the I love that Thunder team. Don't get me wrong. Um, and then obviously the two playing games, which I see them winning, um, unless Zion comes back, which is a big if. Uh, you know I. I'm thinking more and more now. I have to, I have to go with the Blazers. My God! I think in in, in times, in, in times, and I mean in times like these, when you think about it, experience is everything, right? You have to have that experienced veteran leadership, and they probably have a really nice set of not experienced only, leaders. Not only the most ex, one of the not only the most experienced team in the uh, in uh, in that push for the eight seed in the West. But also one of the most experienced teams in the bubble. I mean, yeah, they, yeah, that's very, what they've been to the playoffs cons, uh, consistently for the past five years. The and same only, young core, the same core that has grown up under our very eyes, uh, because we get to see them a lot being Warriors fans, and they're still they're, they're at the top of their game right now. I I, I can see it happen. And not only that, now they have Melo um, and Nurkic, as you said, back. So again, more veteran leadership experience that they have the one quality that no other team has in that bubble, except for maybe Greg Popovich and the Spurs. But even then they don't have very many experienced players who have gone to that far of a level. I'd say the Lakers, maybe the only team close with LeBron, AD and Rondo. Rondo. AD, AD barely had any playoff experience. Like he had the, he had that year where the, Pelicans were in the playoffs, but they got absolutely bullied by the Warriors. And I, the, the Lakers don't have any playoff experience. I say the, the closest team is probably the Clippers with Kawhi and PG3. Um, and, and, and then the Rockets. Discount the, the Rockets, Rockets, yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that, that's, that's probably the most experienced team in the West. And then the East, you obviously have Philly and um, Toronto. Toronto's probably the most experienced team out uh, in the East. And I think, as you heard, CJ picked the eighth seed. You don't really have to explain much. So moving on now uh, to the championship team. There's, there is a championship bubble. Um, there's a clear cut between non-championship teams and championship teams. There's no question about it. So, guys, CJ, we'll start out with you. Four teams, two from the East, two from the West. Who is in your championship bubble? Again, four teams. I'm going to be a little different here. So I know that the Lakers pretty much – have you know locked the West down? I know the, everyone's talking about the Clippers. You know, we just heard you know the Trailblazers. We've heard the Rockets. We've heard the Thunder. Two teams that you know I haven't really heard much about. Number one is the Utah Jazz. Now I'll be honest. You know, looking at their looking at them right now, you know, eight and a half games back, forty-one to twenty-three. But that Jazz team, I don't know why. It just seems like every year they get underrated for who they have. So. I can definitely see them, you know, making a little bit of a late push and end up being in, in the uh, in the West. Uh, another thing, uh, you know, the Mavericks, you know, hey, they have Luka Doncic. We've seen LeBron take a Cavs team who had no one and drag them to the finals. So they evidently are thinking that, you know, Doncic, you know, I think he's got skills to do it. Do I think he's LeBron? No, of course not. No one's LeBron. But I think he could easily do that. Eastern Conference is a lot easier. I mean, the Bucks. Let's just be honest. You know, you got they got Giannis. They've got a good team around him. They're they're running away with the East. And then I hate to do this. I'm a Raptors fan. I hate to do this. 
I've got the Celtics. That Celtics team is just way too good. Even though the Raptors are three games up on them, I just I do not think that Raptors team is going to end up doing really well. I got this weird gut feeling about it, and that really does actually help me a lot. So that's who I've got. Okay, Nate. Um. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the clip. I think there are two very obvious teams, one on the West, one on from the East, and that's going to be the Clippers and the Bucks. They have the two most talented teams by far in the league, two, two teams with the best depth. Um, and I think those teams are, are locks for having a deep push in the playoff, in my eyes, that is. I'm going to agree with CJ on the Celtics. I'll elaborate more on that. Um, and that, mainly that's because of losing Kyrie, which I know is like, whoa, Kyrie Irving's one of the best point guards in the league. He's a great ball handler. But I truly believe that Kyrie Irving is the most toxic player in the NBA. I do not like him at all. Um, I respect what he's doing. I respect what he's doing with Black Lives Matter and his documentary. But I do not like him as a player. Um, and so he was really the the, the reason why that team, which was so good, so which is still so so good, is not real. Ne- never really made a big push in the in the Eastern Conference. And you got Jason Tatum, one of the best young uh, uh, wings in the league. You got Kemba Walker, a very experienced point guard who's been underrated his entire career. You got Jalen Brown, another really good young wing. You got all these young great pieces, Daniel Pierce and Alex Cantor uh, at centers and that stuff. Um, you got this really good young team under one of the best um, uh, uh, play callers in the NBA in um, uh, Brad Stevens, who I'm a big fan of. I really love what Brad Stevens has done in Boston. And so that's probably going to be my team from the East. As for the team from the West, I'm going to agree with Kieran, what he talked about earlier. I really like the Rockets team. Um, I think – um, they were gelling. They were gelling a lot um, at, at, right before quarantine uh, started. Um, they had, Obviously, you had James Harden and Russell Westbrook. They finally figured out how to run their lineup together with them, which I think was big. And, of course, that's not playing at Oracle. No, um, no reason for fans to get into the players' heads. And Dan Tony is obviously a legendary coach, and I think they will – um, easily uh, make a push uh, for the finals. Um, Nate, I'm going to agree with you on the locks. I think Clippers and Bucks locks one east, one west. And going back to the east, I'll give you Celtics are good, but just to mix it up a little bit here, I'm going to take the young up-and-coming Miami Heat coming out of the fourth spot. And hear me out. Yes, do I think they can beat the Bucks? No. But I think if they beat the Bucks, they're going to make the finals. I think I think I think that one four matchup, Bucks Heat winners gonna go to the finals of that series. And I'm just gonna read some names off this roster: Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, Jay Crowder, Tyler Hero, Andre Iguodala. There, you have some good playoff experience. They also have Derek Jones Jr., Myers Leonard, Kendrick Nunn, Duncan Robinson. I, the the main argument here is they're probably one more piece and one year away. Because this team's so young, Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero. But I, I, I honestly think they have it in them. Uh, Eric Spolstra, he's been to the finals multiple times. He's a good coach. He's, he has good playoff experience and leadership of that team. I'm going to take the Heat out of the East. And for the West, I had the Rockets, but I'll just talk about the Mavs real quick. Doncic, Porzingis, they're looking great. Doncic and Boban were having a fun time in the bubble. I think in the West, it's the Mavs. In the East, it's the Heat. So we basically, what we did is we switched, we switched yep. each other's bold takes. Yep. <laughs> and I also really like that. I really like that Heat pick, mainly because Pat Riley always has something boiling up, um, and it's their great team. Uh, I will say, I don't – honestly, I don't think that – it's going th- it's going go both the bubbles are going to go through the bucks and the clippers if you beat the bucks and the clippers you're in uh momentum will carry you there if it's in the first and second round and obviously even the conference championship if you beat them you're in the finals the the second team that i think with the lakers loss of rondo and bradley there's a big hole that's opened up in the western the conference and Dion waiters 
two yeah, groups. but I'd take Rondo and Bradley any day over J.R. Smith and Dion Waiters. Uh, the question is, though, is can the second team rise in the East? We've had the Raptors, the Celtics, the Heat, and the Sixers all all in that same stratosphere. I'm going to pick the Celtics. I'm with Nate. There's just too much talent for them not to overcome the Raptors. You can put the, put the Sixers in there, but I, I think that the, the Celtics probably match up better in terms of with the Sixers, I know I, I'm going against my bold prediction here, but I have to pick the Celtics. You just have to be safe. Jason Tatum was going off. He was he was really good, good player, season player, and now he's gotten even better with this with this break. In the West, I'm still going Lakers. I just can't go against LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Those are the two of the top five players in the NBA. That's just they have the best starting lineup in my opinion out of anyone. It may not be deep, but with two of the top five players in the NBA when you have them in your starting lineup. I mean, after a certain point, it's just going to become very, very, very unstoppable if they can click as they have in this past season. Uh, so, I, I, I have one more bold take for you while we're talking about the Lakers. In the big moment, J.R. Smith will remember the score this time. I, I know no one's expecting it. At this point, we just assume he doesn't know it. I think this time he takes a peek at the scoreboard before he comes in, checks out the score, remembers the time. My bold prediction, J.R. Smith will remember the score in the NBA bowl. And, and I'll actually do one better. <laughs> Is that J.R. Smith will actually be a key contributor to the Lakers' playoff run and success. I actually think he's, been, he's a really good player. He's been working. Um, I know I got a little serious there, but yes, he will remember the score. <laughs> uh, moving on now to our last topic. We know sports world has gotten a little bit bigger than the NBA as of late. We were just too excited, so we talked about the NBA this whole episode. Uh, so now it's up to us to talk about and cover the ground a little bit about other topics. Three things separately we'll, uh, we'll have for you that's going around around sports world, not just the league, the NBA. We'll expand beyond the NBA. So, Kieran, we'll start with you. What is your thing that you want to talk about? What's Not a surprise. On? You all know it's baseball. Baseball set to return um, July 21st or 22nd. That's a few. That's just a few days today, and I am very excited. I was I, – I had tickets to go to spring training, and the first game that was canceled was the game I was going to go to. So, I uh, could not be more excited for baseball to return um, and I think it's going to be a very interesting 60 game season. I think it helps some teams better than it helps others, but I'm going to go with my contenders, Yankees, Dodgers, Twins, Astros, and the Braves or Phillies out of Vienna. But I think it's going to be a really fun 60 game stretch. Nate? Uh, I'm actually going to stick at the bubble, um, which I know is, sounds boring because we talked a lot about it, but this is more about off the court sort of things. Um, I've uh, a good time to pass your day. If you're curious what life is like in the bubble, I recommend checking out um, um, a, a couple of uh, NBA players are uh, vlogging it on YouTube. Um, and so I recommend checking out Matisse Thibault. Uh He's a rookie on the 76ers. He's been vlogging it consistently. And same with uh, JaVale McGoat. Javale McGee, um, he's been vlogging it as well, and uh, it's it's really nice to see like all these like players that you know and love, like um, you, you get to see Tobias Harris a lot and uh, Matisse Thibault uh, one, and then also you get to see LeBron and AD in Javale McGee's one, and that's it's just so weird to see them you know doing things that we would do, you know, play ping pong, go on a boat, you know, it's it's, it's really refreshing to see that. So CJ. it's going to be a little different. Um, everybody knows that, you know, Canadians love their hockey, right? Well, they're getting a double dose of it this go around in quarantine. Edmonton and Winnipeg are hosting the quarantine bubbles for the NHL. Now, that's not obviously big news. I mean, everybody kind of knew they were going to play hockey. It's in Canada, of course. The big one is the fact that from July 28th to August 9th, the kids in those two bubbles are playing – one games before actually starting the playoffs with seven game periods. They are playing more games of hockey in a condensed time form than they normally do in a season. 
And then they've got, and then the teams that managed to get out of that are going in straight into a 16 team, seven game series playoff. Now, how is this crazy news? Number one, how the heck are the players going to come out of this not with any injuries? Because you're basically playing every day. That's essentially the schedule. The NHL schedule, they're playing, there's a game almost every day. There's multiple back to back days with teams playing. That does not happen often in the NHL. Usually there's at least a day break. So I'm more worried that the people, while the fans are going to love it, you know, hey, we can tune in every night, there's hockey on. I'm just more worried for the players as, you know, how are they going to hold up? You know, hey, we've got a game, you know, I'll just give you a good one, August 5th and 6th. The, uh, you know, the Avalanche play a game, they play back-to-back games, you know, 6.30 p.m. and then probably another game probably around 12, 14 hours later. You know, are their players going to be able to hold up? You know, because hockey games are tired. Do, do, do I think the NHL is doing the right thing? You know, yeah, they want to finish the season. They're almost done with it. But do I think that the players are going to be a little concerned going into it? I, I definitely can see that happen. Okay. So I'm going to talk about Washington's football team, formerly named the Washington Redskins. This is a, a important topic and I'm, I'm so glad they finally changed the name uh, because it's about time the Dan Snyder <laughs> does something. Uh, only, also, when, only when he's losing out on a billion dollars, you know. And, and now on top of that, the min- minor owner, owners are mm-hmm. wanting to back out, which is um, And then also, also, also the sexual misconduct stuff. And right, that whole organization. It's, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I went on record and, and I think I've said on past shows and podcasts that Dan Snyder is my I he's the one of the worst owners in sports and I, I mean it's, it's not even a question and I'm finally thankful that we are holding him accountable to this terrible name and, and if, if, uh, there are a lot of people who are insulted but I mean it's just a name change the organization is not moving they're staying in the same place players are the same players are for it it's just a name change. It's not that big of a deal. I know a lot of people are, are, are really angry and really like, oh, wow, you, this is such a big, big thing. But it, it's just a name change. It's important, but also you have to realize that it's a, it's a name change and the organization's not moving. So it's not something you have to get angry or mad about. That's just my opinion and my take on this. But uh, what, that does it. For, go ahead. What I, what I love about um, Washington's name change situation is that this dude out in Virginia – has been um, trademarking right. some of the names that they could get. So right. he trademarked the Washington Red Tails, the Washington Warriors, um, all these names that people are, are looking at, um, and he's trademarked them. And that, right. that, that means Dan Snyder will have to pay, like, a lot of money to, to get the trademark off because this dude's going to be looking for, you know, cash. I know, and it slowed down that process, so that's why they haven't changed it yet. Um, and that does it for our show, Sports sit down uh, for Nate, Kieran, and CJ. Uh, that does it. I'm Sunny Singani. Uh, you can check out our other interviews. We've interviewed Dieter Kotenbach. Uh, we just interviewed Wes Goldberg and we interviewed James, James Waters from the Chicago Bears. Uh, thank you for all the support. See you next time. Take care.